Joe Rogan, Joseph Rogan, has secured another Netflix comedy special. Wow, we. But I was uh, surprised to learn it's the first special he's put out on Netflix in six years. I think so far he's done all these specials on Netflix with the exception of like CDs. But I was surprised it's been six years since his last special dropped. But I guess in between that time, pandemic happened and stuff. So I'm sure that might have affected things. But he's been without a special for six years. That's a long time. Most comedians are like two to three years. I think they, you know, film a special and stuff. And then you reset new material another two to three years. But six years is a long ass time. I wonder why it took so long. But to be fair, the pandemic probably didn't help. And then obviously opening up the mothership. So that was probably another two years, which probably equals about four. So, you know, that probably explains why he hasn't really put out a special. So it's probably it's probably more like two years if you count the pandemic happening and trying to open up the mothership because they had one site that they nearly bought that fell through. Then they ended up with a site they're on that at the moment. So all those things probably added to the time in between. But he's doing a comedy special with Netflix. This time it's a live one, similar to what, um who did it recently? Was it Cat Williams? Cat Williams did a live one recently. So Netflix is trying to do this type of things. I guess they're doing this as a way to get people to kind of lock in because I'm assuming their numbers are not really great. So they signed these guys to massive contracts, which are probably, they probably overpaid these guys, to be fair, for the contracts that they give them. Or probably not. Maybe they don't, because if you're a streaming platform, that content exists on your platform forever. So essentially, you could eventually get, make your money back. But essentially, I imagine what they want to do is kind of inflate their viewership numbers. So what better way to inflate them by having like time sensitive events, live events like comedy specials. Um, and then obviously, you know, the collective feeling around watching it together as a as a quote unquote online family will be a lot more um you know appealing to a lot of people and obviously will help them would get their bump up in numbers but it'll also be a good chance to see rogan in his element actually performing live like he does all the time the only problem with rogan now is that i feel like nowadays people have kind of decided that he's not funny i think beforehand he was maybe seen as interesting now he's become a little bit more annoying he's kind of become a little bit more of a boomer he's leaning into the right wing grift sort of thing he's very pig-headed and hard-headed and not as like open-minded and curious as a rogan we all knew and love and one thing that has been very very obvious in the last two years is his inability to catch jokes there's been so many youtube compilations done about him not getting jokes the subreddit gets on him all the time about not getting jokes and turning every conversation into a conversation about covid cancel culture biden being you know um slow trump being the best like it's the same fucking cycle of topics so this special is coming at the worst time because everyone doesn't think he's funny but it also could be the best opportunity for him to showcase oh look you guys didn't think i was funny you guys didn't think i had a ha ha the he he's a ho ho's cool watch this so will he surprise us or will he remind us of how unfunny he is? We'll have to tune in when we find out. Article courtesy of Variety. It says, Joe Rogan is back with his first comedy special in six years, a live event that will stream on Netflix on August the 3rd at 7 p.m. PT. Titled Burn the Boats, the special will be filmed at the Majestic Theatre in San Antonio, Texas. It's directed by Anthony... Oh, I thought, it was, I thought it was gonna say it was directed by Anthony Cumia. <laughs> I thought that was about to say it was directed by Anthony Cumia. I was like, what the hell? Um, it's the, directed by somebody called Anthony Giordano. Giordano, a veteran director televised um, UFC fights who's helmed the four Joe Rogan specials, Strange Things, Triggered, Live from the Tabernacle, and Talking Monkeys in Space. Don't get mad at me. You know who you came here. You know why you came here, Joe. Jokes um, on the trailer. Burn the Bridges, executive produced by Rogan, and that Jeff Sussman and Chandra Keys and Brady Na Nasfell. The special joins recent Netflix live comedy events like Chris Rock Special and John Mulaney presents Everybody in LA. While Rogan has performed as stand-up comedian for more than 30 years, he is of course best known for Joe Rogan Experience, the number one podcast on Spotify. It's pretty wild, isn't it? It's pretty insane that he's been performing Oh, he's been a professional stand-up... He's been a stand-up comedian, not professional, but stand-up comedian for 30 years. And many people on the internet, myself included, don't think he's that funny. That's proof, if you needed it, 
that this whole idea about oh um get up as much as possible after the magic 10 year mark you become funny and that's when you finally get it it's not really true is it if you watch enough kill tony you'll see you either have it or you don't yes the amount of years you do something and you practice and hone your craft will help but if you don't have it you don't have it this guy's been doing comedy for 30 years and he's all right rogan you know he's all right but you wouldn't call him one of the best you wouldn't put him up there with the greats i don't think so i wouldn't personally maybe because of ticket sales and because of profile and status maybe but in terms of pure comedy joke for joke bar for bar set for set he's not really up there with anybody he's kind of you know what's even mid maybe mid-level comic He's been doing it for 30 years at the top level, at some of the best clubs in the world, surrounded by some of the best comedians in the world. Hmm. That's another reason why it's also important if you are trying to pursue a career in the arts or entertainment, getting famous is actually way more important than actually being good at something, which is, which is you know, best, easier said than done because becoming famous in any realm is hard, right? It's not easy. Becoming famous in any way is not easy but you're probably better off becoming famous and then using that fame to segue into what you actually want to do, you know? Because would, would Rogan be performing, you know, would Rogan have Netflix specials if he wasn't Rogan and he didn't have his podcast that was super successful? I don't know, who knows? But that's not the case now. Let's continue. The show has boasted guests such as Elon Musk, Bernie Sanders, Dwayne Johnson, as well as controversial figures like Alex Jones, Jordan Peterson, and Candace Owens. So, interestingly enough, as um, The Rings pointed out, it's not being filmed at the Mothership. I guess the reason behind that is because they want a big crowd, so the Mothership capacity isn't that large, and, you know, Rogan probably, on the big scale, doesn't really, you know, doesn't fart in anything smaller than a theatre. That's probably why, you know? It's, it's bad, obviously, but that probably is why. And it maybe explains as well why Joke World made that video. Joke World's got a video out, pretty good one, where he kind of breaks down Rogan's plans to expand the mothership. And allegedly he's looking to build a theatre as well and another club as well. So most likely that's probably the reason why. He went in the bigger space. He wants that, you know, I think comedians like to have that massive pan shot of the theatre, of everybody sitting down and shit, watching them, the lights coming up on the stage. So um, he probably didn't want to sacrifice that. And I'm assuming Netflix also wanted a bigger space maybe filming. I don't know. Um, but I would imagine, I would imagine, I would imagine um, that might be the case. But I am looking forward to seeing what this special is like. I don't think it will be good. I don't think it'll be good. <laughs> Knowing Rogan, the title is Burn the Boats. So most likely it's going to be I have a feeling it will just be like a podcast topic that you've heard him speak about before. He might just like stretch it out for an hour or extrapolate or, you know, um, elaborate on it. Um, you might get a couple of hot takes you haven't heard before. But I think in general, it will be something that you've kind of, you know, it'll be a premise that you're aware of Rogan speaking about. It'll just be like a, I don't know, it'll be like a, a podcast on the stage. <laughs> That's what it'll be like with some funny, humorous observation thrown in for good measure. That's what I think. What I'd like for him to do, what I'd hope for him to do, which would be sick, it's not going to happen, but I'd love for him to say, you know what? People think I'm not funny. People think I fucking walk all over bits and I'm a bit killer, vibe killer. I'm going to go on stage and just give you bar after bar of jokes, like line after line, set up premise punchline, set up premise punchline, set up premise punchline. He just goes and goes. That would be pretty sick. That would be pretty sick if he did that. If he just went from the beginning to the end. Not going to happen because he loves a story. He loves a factoid, right? Um, all that sort of stuff. So we'll probably have to wait and see with that one. But the response, the response to Joe Rogan's comedy special via his comments on his Instagram have been savage. The last time I checked, they were frying him in the comments. Let me check again and see what I'll go on. So this is Joe Rogan's Instagram account. And if you go onto his Instagram here where he announces it, Joe Rogan burned the boats. The comments on here are pretty lethal. Let's see if, if um, Netflix or someone deleted them. I don't know. But last time I checked, they were pretty savage regarding his um, special. Um, so let's see. <laughs> look, at the, look at the first comment already. The first comment, this guy is coming in strong, right? I hope it's three hours straight of trans jokes. <laughs> 
<laughs> another person burned the boats. It's going to be an anti-immigration tirade, isn't it? Another person. Years ago, I knew him from news radio and obviously Fear Factor. Then found out you obviously commented. The, the, okay, I don't care about that. Um, Andrew Schultz with a flame emoji sucking, uh, sucking Rogan off. Another person says he still hasn't given up on that stand-up thing. <laughs> he still hasn't given up on that stand-up thing. Yo, they're treating Rogan like he's Brendan Schaub. This sounds like Brendan Schaub's comments. Wow, bro. I wonder if there's some people out there. I wonder if there's some people out there that legitimately think Brendan is a funnier stand-up than Rogan. I Do any of those people exist in the chat? Yo, Wagwan, morning, Mr. Mace. What's good? NJ Ranger, what's good, brother? What's good? Just seeing you there. What's good, my guy? Um, I wonder if there's some people in the stream chat who think Brendan is actually a better comic than <laughs> Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> because they, they're not giving him any respect in these comments they're not giving him any respect we all know rogan ain't funny still love the pod though um huberman yes that chris williams guy um williamson williams whatever his name is let's go another person i can't be the only one who enjoys his podcast depending on the guest but i can't stand his stand-up you know the old saying if you can't beat and buy a comedy club to stay relevant wow <laughs> These people are accusing Rogan of buying a comedy club so he can guarantee himself spots as if he wouldn't get stage time, <laughs> this much stage time if he didn't have his comedy club. So to be fair, it's pretty swaggy. It kind of reminds me of what I used to do back in my club promotion days, right? When I was struggling to get DJ bookings, I'd just throw a party as an excuse to book myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get someone to headline, and then you just play, and when some when people turn up, you're like, oh shit, sorry man, the DJ was sick, in it. And this is before COVID. Nowadays, you can use a COVID excuse. Oh yeah, the DJ got COVID, so you just you just left with me, you know? <laughs> you you put some headliner on the fucking list. You put fucking Tiesto as your headliner, but it's just you playing. You're like, sorry guys, you know Tiesto. You know he was he's a, he he got stuck in Ibiza immigration. You know how it's crazy immigration. <laughs> Another one says, he's very entertaining and I love his podcast. I haven't missed one episode. Although he's funny, I don't think he's a comedian funny like the same level as Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart or Russell Peters. Yo, this is not... These backhanded compliments, these backhanded comp observational compliments are terrible, brother. Yo, Big Up NJ Ranger. What's good? What's good? Did this MF steal the name of his special from <laughs> Nigel Farage? Either way, I'd still throw a milkshake. <laughs> No, but you know, you know what it is, <laughs> Nigel Farage. This is the Reform Stand Up Special. You know what I thought the special name come from, or where he got it from, the origins of it. I am. I initially, when I saw the name, I thought it was a David Goggins thing, but I think David Goggins says like, "Who's gonna, who's gonna lift the boats?" But then it's obviously a Viking saying, you know, about burn. It's been, it's been, um. It's been argued whether or not it actually is a Viking saying anyway. I remember when I was doing a bit of a deep dive on it. It's not 100% certain, but it does come from that. When they used to pillage or when they used to fucking sack um, other villages, that was the whole idea behind it. Like you'd burn the boats as in like there was no coming back. You'd go in there to fucking take over, you know, to do whatever. Rape and pillage essentially, which is what people did, right? You whites are flipping evil. Rape and pillage. Um, but... David Goggins had that, who's going to carry the boats? That that stuff he just used to say, right? About endurance and about never giving up and stuff. So it's kind of funny, isn't it? Like David Goggins became everyone's idol because he runs until the cartilage in his knees blow out as well. It's like, that isn't a good thing, bro. That's like a, you need to maybe go to therapy or something. Why are you running until your knees blow out? <laughs> Why should we be like, you know, <laughs> why should we be motivated by you? Because you run down the street topless and your knees are, don't work. So maybe, I don't know, maybe wear some hawkers. I don't know. You know, maybe run on a treadmill. I don't know. Maybe get your cartilage sorted out on your knees. I don't know. Whatever. What do I know? Um, I feel like Rogan should change his don't read comments rule to read the general consensus every two years at least. Another person, best podcast ever, not so much a good comedian. Bloody hell, man. Everyone's letting him know in the, in the comments they do not want to hear him do cost stand up. What the hell is that title about? Joe has never been not funny, but the live thing worries me. 
Hopefully this one's actually funny. At least Red Bar will watch so we don't have to. <laughs> this is something that I've realized only in the last couple of streams. There's a big community of people out there. I'm not one of them because I'm a flipping loser and I have loads of time on my hands and I just am a gluttony for punishment. But there's way more people out there who are fans of comedy podcasts but don't watch them and just watch commentary channels and their roundups and stuff or maybe clips or maybe subreddit stuff but they never watch full shows it's like wow there's a big community of people that do that they don't watch specials they don't watch the podcast they don't even watch clips they watch other people talk about the clips and that's it <laughs> it's a pretty wild community of people and there's a lot of them i was like whoa man okay fair play fair fucking play another one damn the second half embarrassment I got from watching this in the future was so strong I felt like it in the present. Another one. Um, I'd rather listen to the sound of celery being chewed into a mic. Ah, Harland. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, not sure who's worse at stand-up, Rogan or Shorb. Wow. Even comics know he's horrible at stand-up. Now they are forced to pretend he's funny to get here on his podcast. Joe Rogan is the least funny famous comedian. I'd love to know if that's true. No one ever admit it though. They would never admit it. They would never admit it. You'd have to get a comedian super drunk. But I'd love to know if most stand-ups think Rogan isn't funny. To be fair, you don't really hear a lot of stand-up comedians talk about Rogan's special anyway, or his comedy. You, you hear them talk about the club. You hear comedians compliment him on his business acumen. You hear, him, you hear comedians compliment Rogan on his success of his podcast on maybe some interesting conversation he had, a peculiar guest. But you never really hear stand-ups talk about, oh my God, you were so good. I loved seeing you at whatever. Do you know what I mean? That's, that joke that you, I, I don't, you don't really hear it too often. So maybe there is a quiet, you know, an almost doesn't need to be said acknowledgement that this guy sucks at comedy, but he also happens to be the most famous guy in the world. So we need him, you know, that kind of thing. Another person. Um, <clears throat> Joe Rogan is the least funny famous comedian stick to the podcast your stand up is mid Joe is an amazing interviewer and conversationalist but he's an absolute shit comedian <laughs> yo these comments are brutal bro god damn give the guy a break um, this is amazing well done brother I wish he had a little more respect for academics like Andrew Huber um, Huberman I also wish that Andrew would push back when Joe is wrong Random thing to comment on, isn't it? What's a what a random thing to say? It's got nothing to do with it. Anyway, whatever. Um, you restricted Red Bar. Did Rogan restrict Red Bar? So Red Bar can't comment on his... <laughs> I love how Red Bar's the, the boogeyman in comedy. Did Rogan restrict his access so he can't comment? <laughs> ah, they're so scared. They're so funny how scared they are of one guy watching clips. <laughs> You know, making clips and comment like it's just I I just can't get it. anyway. It, it fucking makes me laugh. I love it. Um, sick. That's so exciting. Humpty stores humping stores is not comedy. Seeing Joe Rogan do comedy is like seeing your teacher in public. I can't wait for you to release another unfunny special. Unfunny jokes about aliens and animal noises. Tick. I wonder if he's learned timing or if he's just screamed into a microphone still. One of the worst stand-up comedians ever, this person says, just to end it. Bloody hell. The, the fucking, you know, the feedback from people isn't great. But I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this live Netflix event. I want to see, can Rogan prove us all incorrect and actually be funny? Will he decide to get on that stage and just give us bar after bar after bar after bar of a joke 